When we have continuous data, we can still create frequency tables and histograms. However, we're going to need to create bins or groupings within our continuous variable in order to be able to use it. So I'm going to show you how to create both a frequency table and a histogram with continuous binned data using Microsoft Excel. For this example, I'm going to be using the dog toys data set that we've used previously. This data set is available on the first tab of the Describing Data Week 3 Excel spreadsheet, which is available in class and also through a link in the description for this video. Let's start by taking a look at the data and I'll show you which variable we're going to be using. This is the dog toys data set. We have 50 dogs who were asked questions about how many toys they own or what was their favorite toy. We have some ordinal data like small, medium, and large dog size. And previously we used this beautiful categorical variable where we asked dogs about their favorite toy. Now we're going to use a continuous variable called toys owned in which the dogs were asked how many do toys do you own? And the values range from 1 to 20. What I've done is moved those data points into the histogram tab. This is our starting point, and as always, you can see the ending point. That's what we're getting to. That's where we will ultimately arrive. Let's go back to our histogram. So here are the data points for toys owned. To create a histogram with binned continuous data, we must first create a frequency table using the pivot table option in Excel. Let's start with that. To create the pivot table that we will ultimately use for our histogram, you need to click anywhere among the data points. Just pick any one of them. And we're going to go to the insert tab in the ribbon we're going to click on the box that says pivot table and it pulls up this dialog box asking us about the data points now it already knows that those data points are in column a we're going to create a pivot table and leave it in the existing worksheet and that pivot table is going to go right here in cell d3 now all we need to do is click ok there is a small alert because I do have some data already there and it will overwrite that data. This is where our histogram, rather this is where our pivot table will ultimately go. But first we have to tell Excel what variables are going to go into that table. We only have one variable, it's toys owned. And it's actually going to go into two places. So I'm going to drag toys owned first of all into rows. And then I'm going to drag toys owned into values. I am creating the rows using the toys owned variable data points and the values will match that. Now I can see that the values currently are sum and that's not what I want. I'm going to click on this small gray I info button and change it from the sum of toys owned to the count of toys owned and click OK. And now I'm going to create those bins that I told you about. We're going to collapse the numbers 1 through 20 into groupings of 4, which will give us 5 groups of 4 numbers each. Let me show you how we do that. I'm going to start by clicking anywhere within the row labels. Just pick any one of those data points. And then I will right click, or on my Mac, I'm going to control click, and choose the option for group. Right now, those groupings start at 1 and end at 20, which is exactly what I want. But I don't want them grouped by 1, I want them grouped by 4. This gives me 5 groups of size 4. Now click OK. These are the bins, 1 to 4, 5 to 8, 9 to 12, and you'll notice there is no overlap. 9 to 12 is exclusive of 13 or of 8. When you create bins, Every number in your data set can only go into one and only one of the bins. Make sure that the end point of your bin does not overlap 
with the next grouping, like 1 to 5 and then 5 to 10. We want to make sure that the groups are exclusive of each other. And now we're ready to create that histogram. And to do this, we need to click any cell in the pivot table. And we're going to go to the Insert tab in the ribbon. Now, previously we've used those recommended charts, but you notice this time there is not a recommended chart. So we need to know where to go to find that histogram option. And it'll be right here under the option for Columns. I'm going to open up the columns, and this first one is for Clustered Column. That's the one that we need. Now, Excel does not create APA-style graphs, at least not by default. So we're going to need to do some editing to make this graph ready for publication. And the first thing we're going to need to do is change it from a bar chart, which it really is right now, into a histogram. And you remember the distinguishing characteristic between a bar chart and a histogram is that in a histogram, the bars touch, whereas in a bar graph, they don't. Let's fix that first. The way to fix these bars and turn them from bar graphs into histograms is to first of all, double click. And then we're going to go to the series options and we're going to focus on the gap width. Right now it's 219%, drop that all the way down to 0%. And now the bars touch. Of course, the other thing we are going to need to do is to change the color of these bars. To change the color of the bars, I'm first going to click off and then click the bars again to make sure I've selected all of them. Bar color is going to be available under the fill and border options. I'm going to change the overall color to a medium gray and I'm going to add a border of black. I think that's looking better already. I can also change the title of this table. And I think I'm going to remove this total over here. There we go. That's a pretty good looking table and it didn't take too much to get it to that point. Although there is clearly one more thing that we need to do to edit this graph and that is to get rid of these horizontal lines which can be done quite easily. Click on the lines and then delete. There we go. That graph looks good. And that is how you create both a frequency table using the pivot table option and a histogram for binned continuous data with Microsoft Excel.